problems of the season and resembled the best of 2016 version of Hull FC. Don't believe a word coming out of the KC over the next week. Radford is scheming and the team have that hungry focus about them. Cass may need to hit new highs if they want to progress on Sunday. And Scoots28 Mac gets in touch and she uses a fair amount of Yorkshire dialect as well. She says, hey up lads, travelling over Pennines, wondering which Hull would make the journey. Arriving at ground here in no mint. Uh, not the best beginning but fear not because 1-17 to stood up and were counted. A really good match. We made Murdoch Masilla look average. We counted O'Brien's link up and we played good rugby. Don't think Watts even gave a penalty away. Who needs Ellis, Mint, Tag, Mini and Sneed? Anyway, bring on Cass. The stats say that um, that Watts gave two penalties away. There you go. Um, let me just double check. That. Fantastic. Well, whilst you do yes, that. Yes, two penalties, yes. Fantastic. And who else has been in touch on this one? Uh, Joshua. Yes. Said, we played very well on Friday. I hope we play well on Sunday. Fantastic. Nice one, Josh. Thanks for getting in touch. Some of my contact didn't come out as well. On yeah. The two squares. That's all yeah. we got. Your, your work printer obviously doesn't like some of the emoticons. Do you get the emoticons when you print yeah, them off on yours? Are yeah. we saying emoticons or emoticons? I, don't know I what say what emoticon. Say. People call them emojis, Tom. That's what the kids call them. Oh, uh, right, yeah. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. I don't really matter then, does it? Neither, no. neither, neither of us have. We're uh, both cool. idiots. Josh neither knows us, more of them. Neither of us are cool, are we? Let's, I don't think we've ever, any, ever had any illusions over that. Um, I think the feedback sums this one up um, largely for me. Um, credit to Hull FC. They took the chances, but they were given. Enough opportunities by Salford had been fairly profligate, weren't they, at, at times? So I've seen it seems like a fair result based on what I saw. I've seen several Hull FC big leads at first half at, at the end of the first half, twice against Wigan mm. and um, once against Warrington, and then this one. And I think this one was the best performance of them all. Mm. Uh, to be completely honest, I think they played within themselves when they needed to and express themselves when the opportunity arose mm. which helps cut down the amount of errors you make as a team yeah. it's similar to what they did against Wigan but I think they were just a bit better because they were a bit more organised mm. defensively and then in the second half they showed a great level of commitment and desire to defend their own goal line and it they were clearly very well versed in what this Salford attack was going to look like yeah. and even when Salford tried to change it up, their change-ups aren't massive. No. So it's all about drawing people out of the space they want to be with, uh, being for Salford and have a lot of ball players. Mm -hmm. Now, Hull FC read that really well on this occasion and worked so hard for each other, mm -hmm. constantly getting a number of men around the ball, particularly when Salford went to the strike weapons that aren't about space. So when Kopchak in the middle or even though I think did he grab a try I think he did grab one of the tries did he cop Jack um, I think he might have crashed over yeah he did yeah no he didn't well, who got, who got, I, I seem to recall someone getting a four getting a crash over under the sticks maybe not maybe they're in a different game well, yeah it must have been the week before um, it was the week before yeah uh, the Haraki got one but it was out wide weren't it yeah um, yeah the, or Murdoch Masilla anyway was the point I was going to make mm. every time he got the ball everyone everyone came in um, to stop him doing anything and it was the effort that must have been involved to consistently get in there and, and Hull have been a bad second half side yeah. most of the time this year away at witness aside and let's face it you were playing a witness away um, a witness team that at bottom of the league and right at that point in time were probably playing four teenagers who didn't know how to you know, didn't know what Super League was, <laughs> almost, it feels like, at times. Um, and what you've got here was a full performance mm. from Hull for the first time, probably all season, certainly that I've seen. Um, and, and that was quite impressive, I've got to say. Yeah. Um, more broadly speaking about Salford, and we're going to speak about Wakefield. Um, when people have been criticised in the past for not perhaps giving them the credit that they're due in the way that Castleford have been getting it. I think the last couple of weeks have shown um, what I felt most of the season, which is out of the inverted commas three surprise packages of the year. Um, Salford and Wakefield are perhaps going to start to dwindle now. Cass will remain in the top four, and you'll see sort of I'm not saying the cream rising to the top, but the teams with that muscle memory rising to the top. So you'll start to see leads flow up there and be more competitive. Saints are heading in that direction as well. Do you see what I mean? I think that whilst they've had great seasons, and look, 
they are having a good season. I but two home defeats. Look, if you're a team that's in second place in Super League, you need to be winning your home games to maintain that momentum. And Salford have just gone out and lost two. Now, the other thing I want to talk about. Less than 3,000 people on to watch this one for a team that's second placed in Super League. Yeah, it's shocking, it's embarrassing, it's miserable, and no wonder. This is the first time I. This is the first time I. Genuinely felt annoyed for Salford because I've always felt, well, look, you know, they're a smaller club, but to drop below 3,000 for a league game on a Friday night when, you're, when there's no football season on and when you're second in the table, there's, there needs to be something. Yeah, I, like you said, no wonder Marlon's dropping his toys. Um, talking about, I mean, the attendance stuff is horrible, and I hate talking about it because we have All so many Salford people that we know that are, that are, yeah. you know attend Absolutely. every time they can, home and away, really care about the club, really passionate about spreading the, yeah. you know, f- spreading the net. You know, we've got people like you know the guys at the Devil in the Detail. We've got DC. We've got. Um, oh, when you get to touch time, you know yeah. we've got these people. And when, he poke, when he comes out from under his bridge, anyway. <laughs> but you know what I mean. And mm. I don't want to be throwing stones at those guys. No, not at all. They must be just as frustrating. Yeah, for them. it must be heartbreaking for them. You'll be so welcome. I feel so gutted for them. You're welcome um, at Odsall. But anyway, they get eight thousand on for this game at Odsall. The final point I want to make about the game itself Go is on. we talked two weeks ago about how few errors Salford were making, mm. and last week against um, Wakey, Wakey, they were. They were punished twice, weren't they, on breakaway tries from mistakes of poor execution of play. And again this week, they yeah. suffered from a couple of mistakes that were leaped upon by Albert Kelly from poor execution yeah. by Salford. And I think what they maybe would want to do, and Watson's probably going to do this, because I mm. think he's got the nails too, is strip it back, go back to a middle-focused game, yeah. play the kind of tactics that saw them beat Castleford by a point and um, that sort of mm. that sort of more contained game maybe they got a bit excited because they had a few games where they scored big points this year and they maybe need to roll it back in then work the structures back out because teams will then Constantine are in again Mm -hmm. and then they get that space out wide for pacier players to attack because they've got very good talent there you go superb so what did the stats tell us then uh, a 12-7 penalty count against Hull FC was the only feature to this game that they weren't on top of, but it was evened out somewhat by the 14-9 error count lost by Salford and the Red Devils having 1.1% worse team tackle success. Fantastic. Individually, who stood out for us? Jamie Shaw with a try 147 metres. For Tully Tell and Noah with a try 6 tackle plus 113 metres. Liam Watts with a try assist. 143 metres Josh Bowden 140 metres three successful offloads it was good that they were able to jump him back into the squad from outside the 19 Albert Kelly two tries OK and for the Red Devils both centres continue to go well Wellen with a try assist 113 metres Sal with 105 metres two clean breaks and well a hierarchy credit to him is try four successful offloads as well yeah a bit of a collector's eye on that one OK um, Saturday afternoon down in the south of France Mark Catalan Dragons defeated roundly at home 12 points to 56 by the Huddersfield Giants in front of 9,169. Chris Kendall was the referee. Yeah, Catalan saved one of the worst performances for one of the biggest crowds of the year they've had. Tyler Cass fan said, Home ground used to be a fortress for Catalans, but they are absolute bobbins this year and deserve no more than bottom four. Jake Maymo is loving this ta- his time at Huddersfield so far, and Wigan will need to look over their shoulder. Paul Michael Craig said, Not often your team wins by 40 plus, and you're not satisfied. The wing, the Windang Pelicans uh, would have beaten Cass. Catalans today. Something smells in the south of France and it's not their pungent cheeses. Uh, Luke Walsh was abysmal and he's... What a lovely image. Luke Walsh is abysmal and he's stopping our Bears development. Uh, for us, Mamo was great but Ikaki Hifo was my man of the match. Turner could well turn out to be a great buy. Yeah, I think he will. Brian Davies, Catalans will get relegated unless they get a new coach in very quickly. Well, do you think the new coach that they're getting in will be the answer? We'll uh, talk more about that next week. No. Answers on the postcard, kids. Okay. Uh, against the Giants, they lacked everything you need in team sport. Home advantage means nothing for them anymore. All the championship clubs have gone away to Toulouse already, so going to Perpignan will be no big shock. They simply lack the desire to work hard and dig in two French sides and Toronto in the championship in 2018. Wow. Certainly looking like a possibility, isn't it? Um, Mark W. Mark Wilson got in touch with us. He's a Huddersfield Wilkinson, fan. Wilkinson, forgive me. Yes, of course. I uh, got in touch. I really enjoyed this. Wouldn't have been surprised uh, if it were a low-scoring affair, given the conditions. Catalan weren't great, but we controlled it and carried through the form from last week. Mamo, fantastic again, but a good team performance all round. Yeah, 
Two things happened in this game for me. Carl were absolutely atrocious and their work ethic was shocking. And Huddersfield turned on and played some really good rugby league. A third thing happened in my house. It got turned off at half time. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, it, I mean, it was over as a competition. I actually recorded one, it because we were out for tea with the family for the wife's birthday. Of course you were. Uh, and then Sunday morning I got up and was watching the second, first half and got to close to half time and... I even chose to watch that under twenties football game oh, instead. Right. Fair enough, because it was just yeah. I mean, some of the tries are fabulous as well. Jake Mann was actually was superb, absolutely. I mean, just three wonderfully taken tries, and he's a very very talented young man, isn't he? Jordan Turner out in this out in that left centre slot. I'm not surprised he's slotting in and doing a great job there for them because he did a good enough job at St Helens whilst being a bit more utility based and playing a bit more in the halves in the season before he went to get himself a gig at Canberra. And I'm still surprised that he didn't get more of a shout down at Canberra. Obviously, settling into life down there well, is a big step, isn't it? But he's back at Udders- back in Super League, and he's a very, very talented player. And he's a really good addition to that Huddersfield side. Well, let's wait. Make one thing clear: he was never going to get in first choice ahead of, well, no, of the two not. centres that get in that team week in week out no. down at, at Canberra. But at the start of the season, he should have played that first game of the season. Yeah. And they might have seen something. Yeah, he just didn't get the up. I think Ricky Stewart probably it's didn't just... certainly working out well off. for the Giants. Of course and it is. it's well, a great pick-up for them. Yeah. Is there a better prop forward in the competition than Celestine Igahihifo at the moment? With the ball in hand? Mm. Probably not. He's made more positive plays than any other player in Super League this yeah. year based on how many tackle busts and yeah. offloads he's making yeah. and making tons and because he's so powerful and strong he's also making clean breaks as well we saw him do it a couple of times in this game but we certainly saw him punch people off him yeah. and, and make them go for miles yeah, exactly. like his, his fend is phenomenally strong um, he's a he's a rampaging sort of player that yeah. is the kind of prop right. forward everyone would love to have in their team yeah. to watch going forward and when Akuma Tai comes back they're going to have two of them yeah. so that's that's great the other thing uh, that impresses me about well, the, the, it's just about the minutes they can do and mm. the the sort of the spaces they can cover in defence yeah the other thing that impresses me about Huddersfield is the amount of ball distributors that they've got at their disposal at the moment. I think mm. Martin Ridgid's come... Look, when Martin Ridgid came in, it raised a couple of eyebrows for me because he wasn't really cutting the mustard at Lee and you wondered if he was up for the Super League battle. But he's come in and actually proving to be a very good foil for Danny Bruff in the half. Certainly more so than, than Bryler was when he was normally in at half-back. I know he got some more time at, at full-back. But I think that's a partnership that's going to be experienced and wild enough to do Huddersfield good, climb the table, coupled with... Cruz Naming and Adam O'Brien out of Hooker, whose distribution between the pair of them is infinitely better than what they were getting out of Hinchcliffe, who now is deployed more appropriately as well. So you've got well, I think, four yeah. guys who can spread the play really, really well for Huddersfield, and that gives them more options. Well, well. no, you, you've got seven, because you've got Cudjo well, and yeah. um, Turner, who are both very handy yeah, distributors true. of the ball in the centres, and, and Mamo. Yeah. Um, okay, so to further make my point. Yeah, yeah. I think this was the first, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this was the first time Brough and Ridgard have played together. But it's great signs for that mm. combination if it's going to roll forward yeah. like that. Um, it, it's it's looking better for mm. Huddersfield. And yeah. with the game in hand they've got on Wigan and Saints, well, not on Saints, against Saints, but if they beat Saints in this game, they, they go above Wigan. Mm. They're really pushing for stability. And that's, you know, yeah. that's like probably the best they can achieve right now, you would think, is stability in that uh, top eight. Mm. But it, it's going to be a fun last last six rounds oh. of the regular season. Of course it is. Rather than one of despair you would feel for, yeah. for Huddersfield because they've got some quality there. And if and when I expect they will make it into the top eight, they'll cause some problems for top four sides. It's Come, another situation. To the John Smiths because they're playing very, very well. And if they can keep that momentum that they're starting to build, that will stand them in good stead. It's another situation of them being able to put out probably their most experienced side of the mm. season, pretty much, and those sorts of things. Uh, help. And actually, Shannon Wakeman started to look like a professional rugby league player, yeah, um, which is helpful for them because it means that they've not they're not just relying on two forwards every yeah. game they've yeah. got depth there which helps there you go Catalan Dragons much to say about them just dreadful the, the heads are down there aren't they look I'm not going to bash Steve McNamara because there'll be plenty of opportunity to do that in the coming weeks but they do need to get a new head coach and someone needs to take a grip of this group of players because they are not delivering enough well, 